In this video, I'm going to show you how to use EXE to organize your work for yourself and your student. So let's go to my desktop so that I can show you exactly how you go about that. So over here, you can be able to see that I have, like I told you, I'm going to use the files that I've created for ICT for teachers. I have this video here which introduces everything in this channel. We can look at some of the videos that I have created for you in PowerPoint. Recently, I created a document that shows you how to use EXE. There is, a, there is one where I want to share with you how you can conduct a video tutorial. Like for instance, over here, you can be able to see that when I click that, there is a question that I want my students to answer. And as soon as the student answers that, there is a button at the bottom here, show feedback. If the student clicks that, we'll see what happens. There is a video which pops up, which takes the student through the process of solving the question. In this question, you are told that the force is 200 newtons and the area is 0 0.1 meters squared. And the pressure is the ratio of the force to the area. So let's see how you use those physical quantities to be able to calculate pressure. So the first thing that you do is to write what you've been provided, a force of 200 newtons. And I want to pause at that point because I want you to get the idea that I've given the students a question and then instead of just giving them plain text of how the solution looks like, now as soon as the student wants feedback, he just clicks there and a video pops up and I take the student through the process of solving that question. But this time, it is a video lecture. So you can see that uh, this is quite powerful because the student gets the feedback immediately. Now, there is a software that I'm using here re uh, referred to as Class Presenter 3. Maybe in my next video, I'll be able to explain to you how you use class presenter 3 to make these simple slides instead of using powerpoint it allows me to do the inking on these slides quite easily like you can see there are pen icons over there and there's a blackboard that i can be able to use over here you can change the color of that blackboard you can make it green white or any other color of your preference now there is something else. Of course, I'm using a graphics tablet. I've already explained how you use a graphics tablet to make video tutorials. So if you have not seen that uh, lecture, please go to that lecture so that you can see how you can use a graphics tablet to do that. So I'm using Class Presenter 3 here together with uh, the graphics tablet. Now, how do you insert a video into exe so that it is a web page in other words how do you insert a video in a web page so i'll take you through that process the other thing is this when you look at this question the other day i say that there is some difficulties or the that part of writing some equations using exe can be a bit of a problem of course i know when it comes to writing this it's very easy with exe you know, superscripts and subscripts. It's easy with EXE, but any other equation, it is a bit complicated. How do you solve that? And we agreed that you can write it as an image. What I've done here, this question, I've written it in PowerPoint. So let's go to PowerPoint and I'll show you what I did. So here we've got the PowerPoint slide that I used. I used this slide over here. Let me put the others away because they are not relevant in this video. So I typed this question and then I exported this slide as an image as when it comes to save as I went to the file type and then I went to PNG or a JPEG. This one here, portable network graphics format you can export your file as that or as a jpeg i prefer this because of the transparency that comes with it so the moment you click that 
and you click save of course it asks you for the name you can create a different name uh, the way you want and then uh, of course I don't want to replace anything there so let me just put a number like for example number six I want this to name this file as six for example so I write six there and then I click save then it will prompt me to is it every slide it's just this particular slide that I'm interested in so I will say current slide only and it has saved that slide as a PNG it is an image so it is that image that I will use with exe and I've already shown you how to insert an image in a web page using exe so let's go to exe and see what happens there so if I go to this of course we say that from time to time exe prompts you to save your work so it is important that you keep on saving your work now let me edit this page you can see over here when it comes to the question which I gave the students when it comes to this question here if I click on it you will definitely see that it is an image because it's got these corners which can allow me to change the size of that image so instead of typing here using the editor I just type it elsewhere in PowerPoint and then export that as an image then I'll use that image in exe now when it comes to the solution I'm using an eye device referred to as a reflection so the first thing that I did was first of all I created this page and then I inserted this eye device referred to as reflection for example let me just show you afresh what I did so that you will be able to replicate this process so let me create a page under ICT for teachers a page there and I'm going to call it let me just call it question Q and then I say okay that page is here the I device that I'm going to use here is referred to as a reflection so I'll come it comes under non-interactive activities then you go to reflection the moment you click that that i device appears here so the first thing of course i don't want that reflection to appear there is to insert my question here so i'm going to the editor and my question is an image remember we have just exported that PowerPoint slide as an image so I'll click that and then I will look for it I think I called it it is in ICT for teachers a folder called ICT for teachers and I called it number six and it is a PNG you can see it is right here so I click on it and then I say open then as far as the description I can name the image give it a title the dimensions I can ch change these two if I want and then say insert and it is right there now when it comes to the solution or the feedback I can change the name the title of that button that students are going to click so I'm going to write um, just click here for solution or for answer you can write anything that you are interested in let me just write click here as simple as that because sometimes when I'm recording my screen and I'm using the keyboard there are some letters I would press here but they won't appear here for 
because they are meant to achieve certain other functions within maybe the operating system or within the software itself. So that one's something that I've discovered. You may discover that too, that when you are recording a screen and you're using the keyboard, there are some letters which when you press, they won't appear on that page where you are typing. So it's a bit of a challenge. I haven't yet found a solution to that. That is why I have skipped, for example, that S. I wouldn't, I wasn't able to type it. But it's not a big problem because I can just right click here and it would just work fine. So let me go to the editor because I want to insert a video here. So I'm going to use this to show you how you insert a video into the EXE. So my editor, I go to this icon of the video, click on that, then the type of file I want is a video. I go to where the video is located. It is under ICT for teachers. And when I named that, I called it example of a video tutorial. Double click, open it, and I, and I search for my MP4 file. And it's right here. The moment I click open, and um, I had not written the dimensions of that video, you know, the frame. It's got certain dimensions. When you export your file, when you have created your video, there is an extra file which, which comes during the export and it gives you the specific dimensions of your video. My videos measure 852 pixels by 480. It's important that you write those dimensions exactly as they are there or in the correct ratio so that your video does not appear a little bit old. It comes and fits exactly onto that page in a very neat way. So I've given the dimensions and then I say OK and my video is here. Let's see what we get. I click on that arrow there. I have my question. Remember we changed the name of this button to read. Click here. And the moment I click on it, my video appears there. It's just as simple as that. Now, sometimes you might not want the video to appear. You just want the text to appear. Now, you can, again, when I was using my Class Presenter 3, let me go to my Class Presenter 3 so that I can show you what I wrote because I've not erased it. This is what I wrote when I was making the video. I took the student through the process of solving it, even the way I would award the marks, but the slide is still there. Then I would go to File. As soon as I'm on File, I would say export as image. And the moment I say export as image, it just asks me where do you want that image to be exported to? It's important to know where your images are exported to because sometimes if you've been using these computers for a long time, you realize that sometimes it's a bit of a challenge to locate where you have saved certain types of files. So it is important that you organize your work in a neat way in your computer. So I'll not take you through that process because I've already exported it. Because you can see the moment I click OK, it gives me that image. Now the reason that is important is this. There is this non-video tutorial. If I click on it, it is the same question. But this time, when I click on Show Feedback, Okay, when I was doing this, I used uh, the default uh, settings of this iDevice. I did not change what the students read here. In the next one, the one that we've just done with you, I changed it to read. Click here. In the previous one, 
it it reads show feedback so that is is not a problem you can always change this so the moment i click this it's an image that appears it's not a video so you can see that the student again gets feedback immediately and you can use a video and you can use an image of your slide the one that you ha actually inked so let's go back to the file yeah let's go back here now you can see that you can use exe to organize your content whether it is for your students or for your own learning let's assume that in this particular channel you want to use my videos to you want to to download my videos and then organize them in a certain way so that you can be able to access any video anytime you want you can use exe to do that and i've already shown you how to go about creating these pages using exe and you can see within the click of a button you can access any video tutorial the way you want very very easy let me show you the last part here where i want to insert this smart document in this page you can see the moment i click on it other than this other one here where, where i had shown you how to create mcq you want to know how do i insert this video over here if it was not an i device for reflection so i'm going to use the smart document do, to do that so let's go to by the way this is the file that i have exported as a website that is why it appears like this otherwise the file that i'm using when i'm working on it is this one here of course again it prompts me to save my work so let's allow it to do that because sometimes if you appear if you interfere so much with the way it works it crashes very easily now let's go to the smart document like i said in the smart document i've not inserted that video here so let me take you through the process of inserting a video on a web page other than using the i device reflection so i go to the smart document and then i'll go down here to textual information then i say free text as soon as the free text comes I go to the icon for the video that shows the video and I have gone through this process where I locate where the video is that is the path that this software is going to follow in order to get that video and insert it onto that page I've gone through how you write down the dimensions and then finally you write you click OK so let's do exactly that. And you can see the video is inserted. You can test whether Hello, it's working. Welcome to another lecture where I'll show you how you can prepare a smart document. In. And you can see it's very easy to insert videos onto web pages and then you can always access these videos when you're offline and it becomes a very good way of organizing learning content for yourself and for your students so until next time when i will look at how you use the class presenter 3 or the cp3 to design educational content it's goodbye